Most people have likes and dislikes about food to a greater or lesser extent, but leaving a food out in public is considered a bad manners. Also, many food with peculiar flavors, such as bitter vegetables and ferment food with strong smells, are good for one's health. So there is nothing wrong with being able to eat them. Even siblings have different food likes and dislikes. When I see a friend who tend to be、uh, picky eaters, I sometimes worry whether he or she can maintain good health. Why do we have likes and dislikes of food and by foods? I think eating. As a starting point for expanding my antenna of interest. When I look at the various phenomena related to eating, I am truly intrigued. Taste is not only the original taste of food, but also the integration of various senses. There are still many mysteries about the phenomena relating to liking and the disliking and the taste in the food. And in order to find out the mechanism of the phenomena caused by neurotransmissions, I needed to patiently investigate not only the insular cortex but also many other areas one by one. It is really a steady accumulation of research. That because I am tackling a field in which so much is still unknown, it is rewarding to discover new things one after another. Depending on how I look at it, I would like to continue elucidate as many mechanisms as possible. While there are people who love cilantro, curry, and this, want to add it to any dish, there are others who say they cannot eat it because it smells like a stink bag. A DNA testing company has found that there is a genetic difference between people who like and dislike cilantro. It is common for some people to like and dislike the same food, but many of them perceive the t- same taste. A typical example is cherry peppers, which everyone feels the stimulation of spiciness. But whether or not they like it depends on the individuals. In the case of cilantro. However, a large-scale studies by DNA testings has found that different people perceive different tastes depending on the genes that identify the flavors. One of the genes encoding、um, olfactory receptors called OR6A2 specifically binds to the aldehyde that. Gives a cilantro distinctive flavor. Some aldehydes are described as fruity and greens, while others have、uh, soapy, pungent, sharply and tense smell odor. It was also found that preference. For cilantro is likely to be genetic and varies by ethnicities. Specifically, a percentage of people who dislike it, crunchy food chewed because they taste like soap, was about 14 percent for Jews arriving in Europe and elsewhere, 
represent four people from Southern Europe and Scandinavia, and 9% for African Americans and Latino, compared to about 8% for East Asian and only 4% were South Asians. Cultures that are less likely to perceive cilantro as tasty like soap may be more likely to use it in their cookings. The flavor of cilantro is often described as a soapy in English-speaking countries, but before such a description to become became the common, it was said to smell like an insect. According to a September 2023, discussing the Zarsarancho and the food cultures, a botanical di dictionary is published, described fresh Sarancho as having an unpleasant odor like the uh, bed bags or stink bags when crashed. Sorrento is not the only case in which the sense of taste is affected by genes. For example, some genetics mutations of the olfactory receptor, or R7D4, make people sensitive to the hormone angiosterone. Therefore, people with this mutation that may smell the meat of uncastrated male pigs. Also, the love or dislike cilantro is a strong natural or ethnic factor. It is possible to become accustomed to it after repeated contact with it. Biology is not destiny. Animals have likes and dislikes too. Many of us have learned about taste Aboriginal the learnings and class. Experimental layer are uh, given a uh, Nobel food that they have never tasted before, followed by an injection on an uh, emetic or other substance. After such an experience, the rodent will never eat the food again. That is, the uh, rodent feel sick after eating a certain food, and they dislike the food. A phenomenon called negativity bias is known. This is a phenomenon in which unfavorable information is processed with more weight than favorable information. It is relatively easy to make people dislike a food, but not so easy to make them like it. No matter how much you like a ramen, if you find cockroach wings while you are eating ramen, you will immediately dislike it. Humans are omnivores, just like rats and cockroaches. We have the ability to digest it and absorb a wide range of foods. However, this does not mean that we can eat anything at random. If I eat a highly toxic food, I will be on troubles. A frightened rat, rat has been subjected to food deprivation for two days and is definitely hungry, but is not afraid to eat cheese. A seen and taste aversions, runnings, and negativity bias, it is important for individual survival to preferentially process that is dislikes. In other words, food likes and dislikes are defense mechanisms that prevent humans as omnivorous animals from in digesting the eat or drinking toxic foods. There was a major earthquake in Niigata Prefecture in Japan. After the earthquake, if you were in evacuation shelters after disaster, what would you like to eat?
To my surprise, more than half of them answered rice and miso soup. Is it is interesting to note, however, that rice and miso soups are food that are seek sought after and the extreme stress. Rice and miso soup is where the desired food. Of the premise, the taste of food and humans perceives consists of five basic tastes: sweet, sour, bitter, salty, and umami. These five fifth tastes can be divided into two categories. Those that humans instinctively recognize it as nutrition, and those that they perceive as harmful. The three tastes that are recognized as nourishing are sweet, salty, and umami. Sweetness is a taste perceived as primarily due to sugar, which is a source of energy. When we are tired, we want to eat something sweet. Similarly, salty is a taste of the minerals. When you exercise and sweat. Your bodies crave as a salty food. Umami is a taste of amino acid. Amino acid is the source of proteins, which is also an essential nutrition for the human body's ingredients used for dashi, such as a kelp, kelp and dried bonito flakes, and umami is. Seasonings that are rich in glutamic acid. Glutamic acid is a type of amino acid. It is believed that we are genetically predisposed to like the three tastes of sweet, salty, and umami as a taste of. Ingredients that are necessary for our vital activities. It is said that sour has a taste to produce it when food lots and、um, bitter lots of、uh, bacteria, fungi, and bitter as a taste to perceive the poisonous substances, both of which are known to be tastes that we are born to dislike. It is possible that the dislikes of sour pickles are plant, and the bitterness of the green peppers is due to our instinct to avoid rotten's or poisonous food. Such instinctive reactions are called genetic factors among the cause of likes and dislikes. What is the other environmental factor? This is a case in which an individual food experiments trigger an aversion memory, such as getting sick after eating a particular food, and this causes our individual to dislike the food. For example, a person who has eaten the raw oysters and being hit by them may feel. A virgin turning away to oysters and cannot eat them anymore. In addition to the obvious patterns such as getting sick, especially in childrens, or the circuit that generates a virgin, the memories are complex and sensitive. So it is so that a small experience, such as I wanted to watch YouTube, but I had to eat the by force, can trigger a dislike of the food. In other words, the best way to prevent it, the development of likes and dislikes, is to first the foremost, most important, enjoy enjoying eatings. On the other hand, why is it that as we grow older, we sometimes come to like bitter or like acid food, acid, acidic foods, just as many people enjoy the bitter coffee, which they should instinctively dislike. 
It is also that in many cases, people come to write them as they gain experience and benefit them in some way, other than taste. For example, people may come to like coffee because they gradually come to like the taste of the experience, the relaxing is this effect of coffee. Likes and dislikes caused by genetic factors can be overcome through subsequent food experience. It is possible to overcome likes and dislikes that acquired due to environmental factor. Even if I have lost the ability to eat some things due to environmental factors, I may be able to eat it again. It is like the experience of not being able to eat raw, raw, raw oysters after an encounter with them, but then being able to enjoy them when I try them again much later. It is not unusual for us to find that we are able to eat something we dislike before we know it. Taste versions. Uh, memories do not last forever, but change with a subsequent experience and learnings. This process of becoming able to eat a food that was disliked due to environmental factors is called elation of taste of region memory. If we can eat a food we dislike, there are many nutritious benefits. It is very important for children's growth to be able to eat a variety of foods without disliking them. And it is also expected to prevent the adult diseases caused by picky eating. However, until now, it has not been well understood why a virgin memory is disappeared or what is happening in the brain. This is a bit technical, but I will try to explain it as clearly as possible. Brain mechanism involves an erasure of taste virgin memories revealed. Where do we sense taste? Isn't it at the tongue? The tongue is an organ that sense taste. However, to be more precise, in addition to the function of the tongue, the function of the brain is also important. Human cells have receptors which are proteins responsible for accepting, accepting as external stimuli. Taste receptors on the tongue bind to taste elements such as sweet, sour, and salty when they enter the mouth and transmitted this information to the brain in beer knobs. This is how we perceive the taste. So we perceive its taste only when information on food and substances received by the tongue reaches the brain through the knobs. The insular cortex is known as a region in the brain that is responsible for the perception of taste. It has become clear that the insurer cortex is deeply involved in the running and erasure of taste aversion memories. One of the functions of the insurer cortex is not only to recognize the stimuli transmitted to the brain, but also to remember them as experiences. There are still many aspects that remain unclear as to what specific mechanisms are at work when taste aversion memories are learned and when they are released. In order to clarify this, I am currently focusing on synaptic plasticity and insurer cortex. It is widely known that human memories and running are deep related to the structure of neurons and brain and the synapses that connected them. Efficiency which, with which uh, these synapses are transmitted information is not always constant, but changes flexibly as they adapt to external stimuli. This is called a synaptic plasticity. When synaptic plasticity is activated, 
responses to stimuli of the same intensity are strong and running as more likely to be retained. On the contrary, of the plasticity of synapses and the insular cortex weakens, it is so that the taste of virgin memory will move towards elimination. Previous studies have confirmed that plastic changes and synaptic transmission and ensure cortex are deeply involved and ensure a taste of virgin memories. However, it was not clear how the plasticity of the synaptic transmission is specifically controlled on the brain. We are tempted to observe this on the experiment. I focused on endogenous cannabinoids, which are also known as a type of brain drugs. Endogenous cannabinoids play a wide range of roles, including memory recognitions of learnings, motor controls, anesthesia, and sensitivity pain without a loss of consciousness and appetite regulations. Has it shown that they are also involved in elimination of taste abrasion memories? Therefore, we conducted an experiment to observe how synaptic plasticity and insular cortex is regulated by endogenous cannabinoids, which are substances involved in raising the taste of virgin memories. Specifically, they used mouse brains and apply at a continuous high frequency electrical stimulations of 100 Hz for four seconds to areas and ensure a cortex that controls the taste perception. This would induce the release of endogenous cannabinoids. More simply put, the electrical stimulation mimicked the experience of it's okay to eat by producing a narco narcotic on the brain.